Oh good, you're back! Welcome, I'm Pastor Theo, and you know in the very first episode of All About Your Faith, I decided what the purpose of this channel would be. To promote faith while simultaneously criticizing all of its institutions. Today is no different. In fact, it probably hits closer to the mark than any other episode thus far. So, with that said, here's a question for the Christians in the room. There are thousands of different Christian denominations across the world, hundreds in the United States alone, each with their own unique worship, their own teachings, their own way of being a Christian. So how do you choose which brand of Christianity to follow? Most of you already belong to one Christian faith or another, but I find the way most Christians act about sectarian worship is more like spiritual roulette. After all, can they all be right, really? Are there not better practices and better teachings than others? History is full of examples where religions, even Christian religions, were wrong and taught incorrect doctrines, which led to wars, inquisitions, rebellions, and reformation. In fact, that is in part why there are so many Christian churches today. So let's explore this question. How do you find the right church for you? And why do you choose the church you do? Many, if not most, Christians never have to choose what faith to belong to. It's chosen for them at birth, and if they keep to family tradition, it's the faith they stay in all their life. Since so many carry on this way, I guess that works for them. In which case, problem solved, question answered, and no need to go further, right? But then there are some Christians who are searching for a faith to belong to. They don't have a tradition, or through some disillusion or exclusion from a previous faith, they find themselves in the market for a new faith to join. Ideally, one with the same or similar values and practices of worship, if not better. But because there are so many variations on Christian practice, you could easily be overwhelmed by the many choices. Luckily, most options are excluded based on geographic availability or community support. After all, why not go to the church that's not only convenient but favored by all your friends and neighbors? I'm sure it's perfectly legitimate and safe for your soul, if everyone's doing it. On the other hand, if you're a Christian who's, well, let's say a little more selective, not at all, picky about what Christian faith you belong to, as if there was a difference, you may consider a number of additional factors. Because I was kidding before, there are actual really big differences, significant doctrinal variations. All right, let's get the easy one out of the way first. Luckily for the selective Christian, religion, despite all outward professions, is very much like a business in that it's a business. And that's right, that tax exemption status means nothing. Do you know how many corporations dodge taxes every year? You see, you pay money to support a certain individual or organization for services. And the benefactors of your generosity, I mean your holy offering, and by that I mean a handout, is incentivized to give you the services you want, barring within certain Christian limitations of worship, of course, at least until those limits are redefined or forgotten or ignored, meaning there is something for just about everyone out there if you look hard enough. Do you want to rock out while feeling the spirit in the fingers of your air guitar skills, or get super woke while hearing the meticulously forged sermon of your hip rapster pastor? Well, fair enough, but there's a church for that. Perhaps you'd rather congregate with the solemn assembly, choking down ultra bland wafers of holiness, immersing yourself in the heavily scripted symbolisms, bonding over steep traditions, all the while singing out of tune with the congregational conductor in perpetual minor key bliss. There's a church for that. Really, it's a wonder anyone struggles to find a church they're happy with these days. And yet, many still do. But how can that be? We get to enjoy unprecedented diversity of worship, never before seen in human history. What's that, Brittany? You say diversity of worship is nothing new and mirrors awfully close to what the Greek and Roman empires had? Oh, well, I guess that could be distressing for some. But come on, Brittany. It's not like there's a lot of parallels between modern Christianity and ancient pagan religious diversity. Or is there? 
sounds like a topic for another time. Right now, I'm much more interested in how you choose a religion. Let me ask you, what is religion for? I mean, what is religion supposed to do anyway? Most believers will say things like, religion teaches about spiritual things. It gives us knowledge about the world and our place in it. It helps us to know God and thereby get closer to Him through faith, and also gives us the opportunity for salvation through Christ. All of these statements are good ones, but put together, the answer is clear. Religion is a tool to help us in life by preparing us for the life to come. Okay, if that's what religion is for, which religion does it best? Are there religions that suck at it? Are there religions that don't prepare you at all? If only we had a way to pull back the veil and take a survey, well, that would tell us which one to join for sure. But at least until that becomes an option, let's be real. If religion is meant to prepare you for the next life, then any church that doesn't do so isn't a religion at all. At best, it's spiritually themed entertainment or a distraction, as if we don't have enough of that. Spiritual things are understood spiritually, so it's going to be really difficult, and by that I mean impossible, to introduce you to spiritual things with a lot of outward physical performances. Do you enjoy catching the spirit in the swaying crowd while Christian rock plays over the loudspeakers? Are you sure you're feeling the spirit of God in that setting? The spirit that whispers to your heart and mind as a still small voice? Or does loud and catchy music feel good, like always? Do you find serenity surrounded by religious symbols, icons, and effigies? Do you feel safe in their company? Or have you put your faith in idols, forgetting the principles that made the objects special to begin with? Are you reassured by ritual worship and find comfort in the routine? Or has the routine become an excuse for complacency? Does your faith and devotion to the church, congregation, pastor, leader, priest, or teacher compete with your faith and devotion to Christ? Do you rely more on the spiritual knowledge handed down to you by a person than you do on the wisdom that can be distilled upon you by the Spirit of God? If without the Spirit, it's not of God. All these things easily become valuable commodities of counterfeit spiritual currency. They are designed to distract, entice, and enrapture our minds, playing to our carnal natures, and appear as inspired, bringing you close to God in outward profession, but leading your heart elsewhere. Something to think about the next time you walk into church. I'm Pastor Theo, and this has been All About Your Faith.